Previously on a Chief's Journey. Captain Sky Walkman has beamed down an away team to discover that the inhabitants of the planet have been brainwashed by seductive advertising techniques. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Teenagers want to see stories about drug dealers with lots of violence. That's what sells. Oh, no, 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 boy. No, you ain't listening. I told you to stay away from Keisha, now, didn't I? What's going on? I've been indicted by the courts because I wouldn't reveal my sources. And now, the journey continues. Chief, what do you want? So, uh, you know who I am? I watch the news. Atif, I have some information that might help your father get out of jail. I want to try to undo some of the damage I've done, but I need your help in order to do it. All right. Okay, I got the microphone. You sure you want to do this? Positive. Okay, it's your funeral. Yeah, I know. Just gonna look at the camera too, okay? Hello. My name is Arrington Miles. I'm a lobbyist for the Tobacco Consortium, which is the propaganda arm of the tobacco industry. Well, I've worked for the past 10 years for the Tobacco Consortium to stop legislative efforts to restrict smoking in public places. I am now a lung cancer patient. My life expectancy, I'm told, is limited. You see, when I was young, I bought the big lie. The lie was, everybody's supposed to smoke. So I started smoking. And I figured the tobacco industry was the place to make big bucks and so I went to work for them. I'm here to tell you that profits are the sole motivation of the tobacco industry. It is not interested in your health or your family's health. The tobacco companies tell you that secondhand smoke is not dangerous, yet scores of health agencies worldwide say it can cause lung cancer. By the time you see this, I may already be dead. Just pray that you, the American public, will remember what I've said the next time you see a tobacco industry billboard or advertisement. I wish I had. Thank you.
combined cost of refreshments and decorations didn't go over budget, and the custodian said that we left the hall in excellent condition after cleanup. Thank you, Keisha. You guys did a super job making last night's fellowship party a success. The punch. Some of the kids complained because there wasn't any beer. Can you imagine? You know, a situation like this, kids know there won't be any beer. But I go to so many parties and everybody expects you to drink. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to refuse your friends even when you know how bad alcohol is. Yeah. Alcohol can create a lot of grief when it's abused. You guys shouldn't even go to those type of parties. Just avoid those situations altogether. <laughs> no one can influence you if they're not there. The 90s. <laughs> 90s. Remove your mind from those thoughts, Chris. <laughs> Nobody is going to stay home when there's a party going on. <laughs> I mean, even though drinking alcohol is illegal. That's right. If you're underage, drinking alcohol is illegal. But kids are still offered drinks at parties. I mean, what are we supposed to do about that? All right, all right, look. Let's try and find some ways of saying no when somebody offers you a drink. Get a little practice. It might make it easier the next time. Okay. All right? Yep. Keisha, what do you usually do when somebody tries to make you do something you don't want to? Excuses. What? Excuses. I usually come up with excuses. <laughs> OK. Space. Try and get Keisha to take a drink. Fake a party. Keisha, come up with an excuse. Yeah, guys, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Keisha, what's happening? This party is the bomb. <laughs> But look at you, you're not fully dressed. What? <laughs> Your hand is bare. It needs a glass in it. A glass of the true brew, then you'll be ready. No thanks, Space. No thanks? What you mean, no thanks? You can't run around here half naked. <laughs> you got to have the proper accessories. No, really, I can't. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. A glass of the true brew, here, check this out. No, Space. No, what you mean, no? Work. Work? Work. I have to work later. I cannot go to work with alcohol on my breath. <laughs> Scope was invented for that. Here, check this out. No, really, I can't. I cannot afford to show up to work after drinking alcohol. I'm sorry. Well, you gotta work. You gotta work. But me, I'm gonna work on this keg over here. <laughs> that kind of young? I mean, to make up an excuse. And work. The party's at midnight. Who's going to work after a party? <laughs> so don't make up an excuse. Give a real reason. Why even give a reason? Can't you say no and mean it? Sure. Say no and mean it. Stand by the strength of your convictions. It's called the broken record technique. You mean just saying no, no, no. Mm-hmm. Natalie. Offer Space a beer. Same party. Space, you're a broken record. Got it. I'm going to get you. <laughs> you. Hey, sugar cookie. How about a chug a lug? Oh, no, no thanks. You are at a party, aren't you? So have some fun. No, no. You are at a party. Here, chug a chug a lug. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. You gotta get with the program. No, no thanks. Come on. No, no. What an no. itty bitty oh, no, 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 no thanks. Oh, no, no, come no. on. She's gonna win. This is not working. I mean, he's saying no, but she's breaking him down. And he's coming across like a punk. <laughs> if punk. you're gonna be a broken record, don't let your voice get higher. A broken record makes the same sound over and over, not just the same words. Try it again, y'all. Hey, sugar cookie, how about a chug a lug? No thanks. You are at a party, aren't you? So have some fun. You are at a party, aren't you? C 
come on, come on, chug a lug. I've already said no thank you. Alright, alright. No need to get hostile. I just wanted you to have some fun. Oh, well, I could use some of those nachos over there. Oh, would you hand me some? Sure, whatever you want. Whatever you need. Nachos! Nachos, come here. Where are you boys at? Now that I can't believe. I mean, he even turned things around. He stood his ground, then diverted her. Changed the subject completely. Yeah, but the big problem I see is when it's a bunch of people, you know? Yep, peer pressure. Like I said, it's really hard to say no to friends. So make peer pressure work for you. Line up a group of friends before you leave. Peer pressure for good? No such thing. Sure there is. If there's safety in numbers, get the numbers on your side. Before you go, agree to support each other. You mean, you stand back at me, I'll stand behind you kind of thing? Right. Different party. Keisha, you and Space are on a date. <laughs> Please. <laughs> a teeth on mine. You two have agreed no drinking, and you're going to support each other. Natalie, try and get them to drink a beer. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Natalie, what's happening? Hey guys, a keg is happening. Space, you better hurry up and get started. Party time. No thanks. What? The spaceman not drinking? No, he's driving tonight. Okay, you're not driving. You better hurry up and get started. Everybody's ahead of you. Uh, no thanks, Natalie. So what is it with you? I thought we were friends. We are. I just... But Keisha's not drinking tonight. We both want to stay sober so that we can enjoy this party. How can you enjoy yourselves when you can't get loose with your friends? What kind of friends are you, anyway? Good friends. Yeah, and since you're our friend, you don't understand why you would try to get us to do something that we don't want to do. Yeah, so come on, girl, let's get down and partay. Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Good. Good job. I can see that working with friends, but sometimes there are other people who don't take anything for an answer. I mean, people you hardly even know. Yeah, those people are the broken record. Okay, space. This time, Try and get Keisha and Natalie to take a drink. And no matter what they do, don't take no for an answer. Let's see what happens. Keisha, Natalie! <laughs> How y'all doing? Where's your beer at, baby? I'm not drinking tonight. Oh, well, sure, yeah, here you go. No, I have a stomach condition. A stomach condition? <laughs> Yeast is good to settle the stomach. <laughs> Check this out. Look. She said she isn't drinking. And if you were any kind of friend, you wouldn't try to make her. So who are you, Mother Superior? <laughs> you need to get a beer to make you real. Get you down to earth where you ought to be. No. No? No. You don't know me. Not at my party. No is not in the vocabulary. You yes me. Understand? Yes is the word you use at my party. Mm -mm. Yeah, forget this. See you sometime when you're sober, space. So why would anybody want to stick around someone like that? I mean, if he's that bad, is it really that hard to walk away? No, but see, all these things don't always work. True. But that's why you have to decide what works for you and in what situation. There's no guarantees. So remember, if it's possible, why not avoid the entire situation? I mean, you guys had a good time at the party last night, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And there was no alcohol. Stick to the positive. You start down the road to drinking, and you're headed for trouble. Okay, guys. See y'all next week. What is it? My 
my stepfather. He drinks. He drinks a lot. I'm worried about him. He hits me and my mom sometimes. I want to help him. He hits you? And you're worried about him? Listen, Keisha. The best way for you to help him is to take care of yourself. That's your first responsibility. Alcoholism is an illness. He's not acting responsibly. It isn't your fault that he abuses alcohol. Until he realizes that he needs help, he might find himself in trouble that he won't be able to back away from. You just be sure you're not in his path. be down in a minute. Keisha, I want to... Apologize? What is wrong with you? I don't understand. You drink and you drink and you always end up hurting someone. It was an accident. No, you're wrong. It was no accident that you were drinking, that you were in that car and that you were in that car driving drunk. It's not an excuse. It's plain stupid. I didn't mean to... I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry. It will never, ever happen again. I've heard it all before. Remember? You don't understand. I feel more in control when I drink. In control? Control? Did you feel in control when you almost killed a thief? Do you feel in control when you hit me and mom? Admit it, you have no control. Yeah, Dad. I just got back from the library. Well, before you go to the hospital to see a thief, I want to check your homework. Wait till a thief sees this. Can you hear me? Yeah, Dad. This is going to be the bomb. Of Teen Journey. I'm your host, Jan Day Walton. 
Today we're highlighting the work of a young man named Atif Parker. Atif is listed in stable condition at Prince George's County Hospital Center. He's recuperating after being hit by a speeding drunk driver on this very street. Ironically, he was filming a video about the dangers of tobacco and alcohol abuse. We take you now on Atif's journey. As cigarette smoke passes through the lungs, it leaves behind a sticky brown tar. This tar acts on lung cells, which is the beginning of cancer. Atif, we've conducted our own survey, and most of the people we talked to said that kissing someone who smokes is like kissing an ashtray. It's nasty. According to some of the sisters that I've interviewed, they say when, you know, brothers try to come get a date, and then Bamas have, like, alcohol and tobacco on their breath, it just makes them sick. And they said when they smell it in their clothes and they breathe all on them, and it just turns them off. So, you know, that's why I had to quit. Yeah, so, like, hello? The honeys was just turning me down. If you're pregnant and you're smoking, you're delivering nicotine and carbon monoxide to your baby's bloodstream. With every puff, you increase the chance of your child either being stillborn or dying within the first year of its life. The burning tip of a cigarette or a match can reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Did you know that? Did you know that? Cigarettes, lighters, and pipes are the most common starting points for domestic fires that cause death. And most of those who die are children under five years of age. Smoking is highly illogical. You ever stop and think about the effect those beer commercials have on our younger brothers and sisters? Give me that boom, fool. It's a full time jack move. Same time, more flicker make the black move. And I tell when Tom, Dick, and Hank, who bought eight ball, you got gang. And here's how we'll greet, sir. Crash your brew first time we meet, sir. The media tries to tell us that alcohol can help us cope with anger, frustration, and anxiety. Don't believe the hype. You feel dumb because it didn't know. I do don't drink that other beer no more. Drink some and you won't change back. You say, I ain't never drunk a beer like that. Let me talk to you close here, friend. See, it's all a plot, my brother. They want to get us. They want to mess with your mind. And if you didn't know, you better ask somebody. The media is a big factor in this. This is the first generation by age 15 has watched 18,000 hours of television, listened to more than 22,000 hours of radio, compared to less than 11,000 hours of school, or uh, less than 3,000 hours of church, temple, or synagogue, which means that quantitatively, this generation has, the media has more access to our minds than home, church, and school combined. There's a place where the home team always wins where fashion models cling to ordinary guys. And ordinary guys really know how to dance. Why can't life be like beer commercials? Why? Ask why. I'll tell you why. Because the alcohol and tobacco companies don't want you to question why they spend millions of dollars trying to get you hooked on their products. I mean, the advertising is everywhere. On TV, radio, billboards, and magazine ads and all of them are selling you something. They are selling you a fantasy, that their product is the best. They will do anything to make that sale. So what are you gonna do? Believe everything you see, hear, and read? No. So the next time you see an alcohol or tobacco ad, ask yourself, what are they really selling you? You know, alcohol and tobacco are two very harmful drugs. They can do serious damage to you or to someone you love. Oh, Keisha says hi. Oh, yeah? How's she doing? She's a lot better. She says she was going to the hospital to see her teeth after a counseling session. Her and her mom have been going to counseling for the past couple of days now. And she says tonight, Mr. Miller is going for the first time. Oh, that's a big step for him. Steve, listen to me. If you're ever in a place where there's drinking going on, you don't. You're just dumb. Dead. No, I'm serious. And don't you get in any car with any kids who have been drinking. 
You call me or, or a cab or someone you know who hasn't been drinking. And if I ever hear tell of you drinking and driving or even riding with someone who's drunk, you won't have to worry about the law. I'll take care of your butt myself. Yeah. <laughs> Chill, Dad. I think Mr. Miller has taught me that lesson already. So, what's all this information you got from the library? Oh, Atif and I have a concept for a new show about what happened to Mom and Atif. So if there's a new twist. See, there's a new hero revolved around me. Well, let me guess. Um, Super Stevie. No, no. It's Parker. Stevie Parker. We found the files. Atif, get out of there now! What they're doing is genocide. I think I'm being followed. These are some very powerful people we're dealing with. If we're not careful, somebody's gonna get killed. Stevie Parker. Homeboy 24-7. I got you a homeboy 24-7. <laughs> For more information on the topics discussed in this show, you might want to check out some of these books. Another Chance, Hope and Help for the Alcoholic Family by Sharon Wegscheider. The Tangle Web They Weave, Truth, Falsity, and Advertisers. A Woman's Way, The Stop Smoking Book for Women by Mary Embry. And to receive pamphlets, books, posters, audio and video cassettes on these topics and much more, Call the National Clearinghouse for Alcohol and Drug Information at 1-800-729-6686. They will help you learn more about it. <laughs>